Video game development is all about could have beens and what ifs, with developers often having grand plans and then running out of time, unable to see their original vision through. This includes boss battles as well, which are often changed or chopped entirely right at the last minute. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 scrapped video game boss battles that would have been incredible. Number 10, The Hydra Half-Life 2. To start things off, we have one of gaming's most infamous disappearing acts, Half-Life 2's Hydra. The Hydra made a memorable appearance during Half-Life 2 showcase at E3 2002, impaling a hapless goon and then dragging him to the watery depths before the player's very eyes. Evoking memories of the original Half-Life's legendary Blast Pit Tentacle, now there's a band name if I ever heard one, gamers everywhere were anticipating a similarly tense encounter against this aqueous adversary. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Valve soon realized that while the Hydra was great to look at, it was a monumental pain in the rear end to actually fight. As detailed in Half-Life 2 Raising the Bar, the Hydra was a massive letdown once the player actually got around to fighting it. The book described the boss as an unsatisfying blob monster whose tentacles killed players before they even realized what the hell was happening, and so the decision was made to cut it from the game. A Hydra that was as satisfying to fight as it was incredible to look at would have been amazing, but I mean, Half-Life 2 turned out pretty well anyway, didn't it? Number 9, The Undead King Jael, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is the game that spawned an entire genre and ensured that any title with even the slightest level of difficulty would be labeled the Dark Souls of platformers, shooters, or horticulture maintenance simulators, pretty much everything. The game earned its notoriety though through its meticulously malevolent dungeons looking at you, Sense Fortress, and some bastard hard boss fights. The likes of Manus, Sif, and Onstein and Smau have battered many a gamer in the decades since Dark Souls' release. But if all had gone to plan, there would have been one more roadblock to bar players' progress, that being the Undead King Jael. Given Dark Souls' infamously opaque nature, it's fitting that Jael himself is shrouded in mystery. There's enough of his code left in the game files to mod him back into the title, but beyond that, it's anyone's guess how he would have fit into Dark Souls, both in story and practical terms. One thing is for sure though, given how difficult kings tend to be in Soulsborne games, I mean, look at Old King Alan, the Nameless King, and the absolutely infuriating Burnt Ivory King, there is every chance that Jael would have been another royal pain in the rear end had he survived the editing process. Number eight, Great One Beast, Bloodborne. From one Soulsborne game to another, we have Bloodborne, a razor-sharp nightmare of a game that lurches from hammer horror thrills to Lovecraftian menace at the drop of a tentacle. No other enemy type illustrated Bloodborne's all-encompassing approach to horror better than its beasts, though. You know, the werewolf-esque enemies that had gone through enough body horror to make even David Cronenberg blush. From the permanently aflamed watchdog to the skinned and mutilated blood-stabbed beast, each was as tragic as it was monstrous, and putting them down felt more like an act of mercy than vengeance, although it was hard to not feel vengeful sometimes when you were being repeatedly slaughtered by them, especially that spider freak Rom. Hate that dude. Each beast battle felt like a highlight in a game already full of highlights, but we could have had one more had the Great One Beast made the cut. Given that Bloodborne already has more than a dozen beasts to slay, you can see why the developers might have felt that one more would be overkill. Then again, you can never have too much of a good thing. And we'd have much rather faced down the Great One Beast than banged our heads against the spell-spamming Mikolash. Number 7, Centaur and King Xemnas, Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2's climactic battle against Xemnas was already epic in its own right, but according to the official concept art, it could have been even more jaw-dropping. Apparently at one stage, the plan was for Xemnas to transform into what was essentially a living castle, adorned with a multi-story crown on its head, and then metamorph into a ludicrously large mecha centaur. That's right, I said mecha centaur. As well done as the actual fight against Xemnas was, these concepts are so staggeringly ambitious that I can't help but wish Square Enix could have at least tried to pull them off in some form. From the very first battle against Darkseid in the opening minutes of Kingdom Hearts, the franchise has had its fair share of colossal bosses. Hell, the recent Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer centered around Sora taking on yet another skyscraper-sized monster. But if Square Enix had managed to bring a centaur and King Xemnas to digital life, it's fair to say that they would have dwarfed the competition. Number six, the harpy boss, God of War. The very first God of War was a milestone in the PS2's life cycle, a ferocious, hyper-violent action-adventure game that breathed new life into the console and started another flagship franchise for the PlayStation. But it wasn't perfect. 
One of the game's most common criticisms was that, after kicking off with a spectacular battle against a Hydra, not the Half-Life 2 one, there was almost a complete lack of boss fights until the final clash against Ares. Had things gone to plan though, there would have been at least one more boss fight in the game, and it sounds like it would have been a doozy. Speaking in a behind the scenes video on deleted levels, God of War creator David Jaffe mentioned the game's abandoned harpy boss fight. This would have been a puzzle boss fight that would have involved Kratos using the harpy slaughtered young as bait, and the fight would have taken place over a large arena and provided more evidence that you were not playing as the hero in this story. Given how well God of War's trifecta of boss fights, the Hydra, the Minotaur, and Ares were executed though, it's safe to say that the harpy would have provided one more memory for PS2 gamers to savor. Not that they're really lacking in that regard. Number five, Metacred, Metroid Prime. As great as Metroid Dread was, one of the best things about it was seeing Kraid finally return to the Metroid franchise after a 27 year absence. And no, appearing in the background of a Smash Brothers stage does not count. However, if things had gone to plan during Metroid Prime's development, we could have fought everyone's favorite hungry reptile all the way back in 2003. Originally planned as a boss fight for the GameCube classic, Kraid was cut due to time constraints. Jack Matthews, Metroid Prime's tech leader, would later reveal that Kraid made it into a prototype stage but the planned fight was unfeasibly large for the time limit that the developers were working under. The battle would have involved multiple stages, moving platforms, and of course, finding a weak spot for massive damage. Given that Kraid's partner in crime, Meta Ridley, got not one, but two epic boss fights in the Metroid Prime series, it is a shame that it took so long for Nintendo to bring the fan favorite Dino Beast back to our screens. But as anyone who's played Metroid Dread will tell you, Scott Tilford included, it was definitely worth the wait. Number four, Gojira, Fallout New Vegas. There are three things you need to know about the name Gojira. One, that it's the name of a French heavy metal band. Two, that it's the Japanese pronunciation of the original 1954 Godzilla movie. And three, that Gojira was an absurdly overpowered mutant gecko from Fallout New Vegas who never made it into the final game. As was unearthed by fans in the game's code, Gojira is somewhat unique from the other entrants in this list in that it was never actually intended to be in the game at all. Instead, it was created by animator Seth McAfee for his own amusement, who enjoyed watching his creation lay waste to New Vegas's hapless NPCs. Still, it's a shame that no one on the development team ran with the concept. A kitschy Godzilla spoofing questline would have fit right in with Fallout's 50s sci-fi gone amok theme, and would have provided a great endgame challenge for completionists. I mean, especially when you already have a dinosaur building in the game, you want to see another giant destroy it. I mean, come on, that's an open goal, surely. Number three, Mecha, Alice Madness Returns. Normally, when a developer removes content from a game, you can't really tell anything is missing. I mean, you could play all of Half-Life 2 and never realize that the Hydra was meant to be a significant part of the game, and Kingdom Hearts 2's Xemnas still felt like a complete boss even without transforming into a giant horse. That's not the case here, though. Here, the editing department's trimming scissors actually left some embarrassingly ragged edges on display. Alice Madness Returns as Mecha was so obviously meant to be a proper boss. It arrives at the climax of the first world, is piloted by two of the game's primary antagonists, and is standing in the middle of an arena, ready and raring to go. But then, suddenly, a giant teapot falls from the sky and kills it dead. Game designer American McGee would later admit that the perennial game development bugbear of time constraints prevented Mecha from being a proper boss battle. Now this is particularly infuriating as Madness Returns was torn apart by reviewers at the time for its excessive length and repetitive level design. It was a classic case of the developer putting effort in all the wrong places, and it was boss fight lovers who suffered for the game's lack of direction here. Number two, Dr. Octopus Marvel Spider-Man. Now, I know, you might be thinking, Josh, I definitely fought Dr. Octopus at the end of Spider-Man. What the hell are you talking about, you scruffy head mess? But hang on, the sequence that you played wasn't actually the one that was originally planned. In 2021, Ted Price, Insomniac CEO, said that the fight against Dr. Octopus was initially meant to be a cinematically spectacular knockdown brawl that would have covered all of New York. And while that certainly sounds bigger than what we ended up getting, which was a weirdly tame final brawl essentially in one building, Insomniac did have a very good reason for restraining their ambitions here, and that was to avoid crunch. Ted Price stated that if the fight had gone ahead as planned, Insomniac would have to force their developers to endure a 
hellish crunch session. Insomniac would have to force their developers to endure a hellish crunch session to make sure it was completed. So they definitely made the right call here in choosing the alternate boss fight over their employees' well-being. Number one, the elusive man, Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3's ending has long gone down in history as one of the most frustratingly anticlimactic things in all of gaming. And one common complaint is the lack of a final boss battle. Indeed, the final enemy you face is the legendary Marauder Shields, a joke name referring to the bog standard Marauder with a shield gauge that you fight at the end. What's frustrating is that they were so close to a fan-pleasing battle, but no one on the development team actually realized it. So. A little background here. Mass Effect 2 had a terrific villain in Harbinger, a baritone-voiced reaper who could take over his minions at will by uttering the instantly memed line, I am assuming, direct control. So when concept art of the elusive man, Mass Effect's shadowy human villain, being controlled by a reaper appeared, we were all left wondering, why did nobody think to have Harbinger assume direct control over the elusive man? Instead of a boss fight with the dude though, the elusive man is taken down in a battle of words, putting a gun to his own head when the protagonist makes him realize the futility of his actions. And why do we end up with this? Well, apparently a final boss was deemed too video gamey, so instead we got nothing. So that's our list. I want to see what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these alternate boss fights or scrapped boss fights that we didn't see at all? While you let us know, could you also please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't thought, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.